This Mexican wave analogy will help you to never forget atrial fibrillation. Think of it like this. When that conduction system is working normally, it's like a Mexican wave. Imagine a stadium full of people and a cluster starts a Mexican wave. One coordinated impulse sweeps across the whole stadium. This happens again and again and again. But in atrial fibrillation, we completely lose that synchrony. Instead of there being one wave generated from the sinoatrial node, it can be like tens or hundreds of fans in the stadium all starting their Mexican wave. As you can imagine, that would be total chaos. By the way, comment cardiology for some free pages of my Never Forget Cardiology Guide. The result is that instead of the atria contracting, they just quiver. Don't forget that the atrial kick can contribute 10 to 20% of end diastolic volume at the end of diastole. So if you're predisposed, such as having heart failure, that may make all the difference to your cardiac output. Now the poor AV node is overstimulated. It can't turn all of those quivers into QRS complexes. It just happens every now and then. The rhythm is inconsistent and we call it an irregularly irregular rhythm. This is unlike say sinus arrhythmia where breathing in and out changes the vagal tone. In that condition, we may see irregular QRS complexes, but they follow this pattern in time with breathing. That's called a regularly irregular rhythm. If the atria are quivering, then it makes sense on an ECG, we don't see any P waves. Usually it's easiest to see them in leads one, two, or V1. To look for an irregularly irregular rhythm on an ECG strip, just mark each of the QRS complexes. If you measure the RR interval, you'll see that it keeps changing. That's irregularly irregular. I've got more memory hacks for you, but you're gonna have to follow me to come and see them next.